Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plank and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. And now, let's welcome your hosts, Blake and Mars. Monday warrior, me, me, stride. Today, some soil, me, me, pride. Well, we'd like to talk for them, so we'll now say it again. If we said we'd like to get the class, I think I'll just do the best. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Blankets After with Mark, episode number 4. 89, the final show of 2023. I am your host, Blake. The biggest deal podcasting style is off this week, getting ready to celebrate the new year. To be back next week's show. But let's bring on my my actual co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Dad. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. And uh I'm hope everyone else is doing as well. Uh I know this is a crazy time of the year, but hey, as long as we can get through it together, that's all that matters. Yeah, this is going up during that weird week between Christmas and New Year's where like nothing matters, but I still have to work every day. So like, it's fun. <laughs> so that's always good to know. But it, my schedule is all kinds of wonky this week, so it's all good. Wonky? Ooh. Technical wonky. Is my, that is my word, that's my word of the month right now, because that's all schedules for the last, like, this whole month of December have been wonky. <laughs> wonky. Okay. So, what did we open up the show with? It's actually our, our longest show intro song in a long time, but what's our song intro song? Hey, we opened up with a wonderful rack number from the Canadian group Rush called Tom Sawyer. The reason I picked this out is it was the theme Wonderland. entrance music for <laughs> Terry Von Erich and World Class Championship Wrestling, the movie of their family, Iron Claws Out in Theaters. Please go see the movie. It is a very emotional movie. The triumphs and the losses of the Van Eric clan in world class championship wrestling. And if you'll you can, be if, I, right now, at the right movie. Now, I will say right now, don't go winning if you want to be happy at the end. No. <laughs> bring 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 Kleenex and a handkerchief. Oh yeah, yeah. So okay, well, we do have a special guest here, and I've been trying to get him on all year during our 10th anniversary, and we got him in just under the wire. What to bring in from the PW Torch, the one, the only Rich fan. Rich, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the uh, job and job change and life change prevented me from making an appearance, but thankfully the elves said a little something to some people and got me here just under the wire. Blake, yeah. Mark, thank you for having me here. It is a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Rich. Always a pleasure. Yeah, always, always. It's great to have you here. Um, I and, you, and you, people behind the scenes wondering, yeah, I've been trying literally since all year to get Rich on the show. But like I said, schedule changes, job changes, our schedule changes. We've been mostly doing afternoon shows because of South schedule and <laughs> the, the planets align. The meteor yeah. showers happen. Here we are. Oh, yeah. What's funny is um, I'm in the middle of something behind the scenes. And I'm not going to talk about it until we come back after our holiday break. But I'm in, and it's funny, I'm in the middle of a phase of the show where like Rich is on like at least four or five, like every like every third week, Rich is on the show. <laughs> at one point, would that be really funny? <laughs> so it was like you, um, Kyle Crane, and I forgot who else. Like three people were like, rotated. Like, oh, John Parker rotated his guest yeah. for like the entire year. <laughs> it was really funny <laughs> at a certain yeah. point. So. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into things. Um, Dad, I have you down for South Park. So help support the show. Put out the you can find the show. That will change soon, by the way. Uh, <laughs> another part of the work on, including the returning clerks minute at the 
And you can buy our shirts, our hoodies, our stickers, and more from our T Public store. Click on a T Public link on our website or go to T Public and search the Black and Sale Show. And hey, I'm asking you right now did the elves bring in the special items for Christmas, like the Blake and Sale Show stockings? Because we can stuff them with stuff. No, I, I, I would love a stocking, but that would just be way too big. The fact that I wore my own t-shirt with my own logo on it sometimes is a little much. <laughs> I'm still waiting for a Funko Pop figure of us. I have one of them for me. I literally have a personalized Funko of me upstairs. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, really of have. you, but what I know I'm of us? Who's, whose name is Personalis? Uh, <laughs> people love me more. Anyway, yeah. this might actually be a lot of time I say this sentence. What's going to break? We'll come right back. <laughs> All right, as always, go pick up Mandy's book, children's book, I Know I Am, available right now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Orange Hat Publishing in English and in Spanish. And coming back in 2024, Mandy, podcast, and the Mandy Show, will be back, they promise, beginning of 2024, available at all podcasting platforms. And um, now in tribute to Sal not being here and Nathan Powell, this is hysterical. Fuck them kids. All right. <laughs> By the way, yes, Rich, we have an updated soundboard. <laughs> this is magical. Well, again, though, because we're not going to be talking about him either, but because this seems to be a weekly thing. Fox so, Cody Rhodes. All right. I, that, there's the other one. I was wondering, <laughs> if we take a poll on which soundbite is better, fuck them kids or fuck Cody Rhodes, who would you think would win? What's funny is that a couple of weeks we might be able to put that poll up. That's the funniest part. <laughs> anyway. Fuck them kids. Let's actually hit this and we'll... <laughs> Oh, my God. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. So, um, two weeks ago, we had, we, had, we had told everybody we were not going to be previewing AEW um, the whole of the World End because of, obviously, our, our holiday break. And we, the card would not definitely wouldn't be ready by the time we wanted to record the show, <laughs> even no. though they're actually doing a better job with that this time than in previous pay-per-views. And because the holiday week, and they, really, they want people to spend money. You might want to announce the card. But... <laughs> But still, we're going to be skipping that show, but we will be doing Wrestle Kingdom 18, New Japan's biggest show of the year. Ooh, and Yes, yeah, this is the, um, the biggest show of the year, and this is a really weird card that we're going to go through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this might be one of the stranger New Japan cards we've seen in a very long time, but because I don't watch, we don't, we don't watch everything New Japan, and the only two people, the two people that come on the show all the time do. Rich is here to help us go through the storyline through Japan because I get confused by some of these matchups anyway. <laughs> so, you know. So, well, Rich knows better than I do. Rich is Allegedly. Rich, yeah, Let's well, just I, be honest because you look at this card, and I'm going to be honest, Blake and Mark. Some of the stuff I've been watching and I still don't know how they got there. <laughs> That's fantastic. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> actually, actually, from what I hear, you throw darts at the board and whatever sticks works. Jesus Christ. I, feel like, that was, I feel like that was somebody match it. They really do. Well, okay, so I, I'm not going to go in the order on Wikipedia. I'm going to go in the order that I felt like putting it together. That's how I do things. Uh, even though the order of Wikipedia is the order of matches that will air on the show. Uh, I didn't realize this is the first time I'm going to be able to use the new, Japan, the new Japan app. I'm actually excited about that. I haven't used it yet. So this is the first time. Oh, there you go. So, Rich, have you used the new Japan World app? How is it? Yeah, I used it for the Real World Tag League, and it wasn't. It's really cool. I liked it. In fact, uh, one of our uh, my buddy and uh, Tord subscriber Kylan Furlow, I convinced him to ask his parents for Christmas to get New Japan World because the app is so more so much more user friendly on the English side of things. Cool. Well, I'm going to be using it for the first time, so hopefully, it is as good as everyone I've been hearing. Also, one other thing is um, announcing changes. Who is the play-by-play -play team for this show, Rich? Because it's not Kevin Kelly anymore. Oh, God. That I don't know. I know Kevin did his announcement. I knew it was going to be a combination of... Uh... Oh, my God. Uh, it fell out of my head. I hate when this happens. It's all good. It's all good. I'll quickly look it up myself. But no, um, it's a big deal. This is the first time... I, I know the first time I've watched New Japan in a long time. That doesn't have... Is, it, is Kelly. Ricky Romero supposed to be on that commentating play-by-play? -play? So I think it's going to be uh, Wal Walker Stewart. And so it's going to be, it yeah, Walker is a pretty cool dude. I haven't seen too much of his work from the folks I trust, uh, like, hey, Karen Sensei, Karen Peterson over at Post, who I work with. 
she seems happy. So if she's happy, I'm happy. Okay, fair enough. I'm guessing well, Kevin Kelly is now on the uh, AEW side of things. Is that it? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. now doing Collision, which he went from hosting Collision to now being Tony Schiavone hosting Collision. Which, by the way, I think it's a better commentary combination of having Shivani hosting and then having um, Kevin Kelly as the um, the color. I think that's better. I like that banter between Kevin Kelly and uh, Nigel. I think yeah, it's, I think it's better. I think it's actually a lot better than it was because as much as I was enjoying listening to Wade Keller complain about Kevin Kelly every week, I actually like this better. <laughs> uh, where you can pull his hair out, whatever he's got left. Oh, give it time. <laughs> All right. The fun thing about the new replacement Walker, he's <laughs> done. If you've looked at any of the WrestleMania weekend shows, he's done a lot of them for like WWN back in the day. Oh uh, yeah, I remember, is, that. I remember that. Those shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's no, he is now going to be historically the youngest non-Japanese announcer to do the English commentary for. Wow, wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. I knew the name sounded familiar, and I couldn't figure out why. Like, one of those things where, like, I know this name, mm-hmm. I don't it's know like why. That I know guy. This name. It's that's that guy. why I know it. I remember. I do have to work back from the. Okay, that makes sense now. Cool. That guy. Right, cool. So he wasn't bad. He's not bad at all. That cool. All right. All right. Twenty-one years old. What were you doing at twenty-one, Blake? I drink it. I moved here. <laughs> no, 21, no, 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 21. 21. My 21st birthday landed on Easter Sunday. <laughs> and I got drunk with my friends the night before, and I got woken up, and I had the worst hangover for Easter dinner. <laughs> worst <laughs> hangover ever of my you, life. You, you, were, you were drinking because you had to celebrate 21 and you would drink all well, over. Me and, my, my, me and one of my best friends, we had our 21st birthdays four days apart. So we celebrated it the night before my birthday together. Oh, that's awesome. And we were, and I, I walked home. Then I walked home the next morning, because safety. And I was walking mm-hmm. from my house, so safety. Mm-hmm. And I walked home the next morning. Finally, got to sleep, and then I got woken up at like one in the afternoon because everyone was showing up for dinner, and I had to get a shower in before everyone for <laughs> dinner. <laughs> like, oh shit! I forgot what day it was. Shots, 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 shots. Yeah, shots. my twenty-first birthday, so definitely not this. <laughs> it's amazing, man. So, well, then again, then again, um, look at my background for me, 25 years old. <laughs> I had to. So I have my, for people on the um, audio side, my background is Tommy Cutlets for good old Tommy DeVito. And um, yeah. I had to do it, even though this is on after Christmas. And who knows what it's going to be like after Christmas, after the Eagles game. But you know what? Yeah. I don't care. I honestly do not care. <laughs> I'm telling you right now that young man can probably go anywhere, write his own paycheck. And get it because of how he's doing. Third string quarterback, uh, uh-uh. uh, not anymore. Well, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm completely diverting what we're talking about. So I'm at the pharmacy today, and um, I hear the pharmacist talk to these couple in front of me. He's like, "Well, that Packer game sucked," and it was this is right after the Packer Giants game. For those in the timeline, wondering when we're recording this, it's right after the Packer Giants game, and I literally just step back. So I'm wearing a double hat. So they literally just step back. And I just, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> and um, the pharmacist realized they short my devil's hat and he's like, oh, you're a giant. Then are you? I just did the Tommy DeVito, the DeVito, as we're calling it now. I did that. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, I understand now. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. So, all right. Look at the Japan. Wrestle Kingdom 18. Let's start from the bottom to the top. It's a lot of title matches and then one non-title match. It's important. Let's start right here. Never open weight championship. Didn't even realize this guy was champion, but here he is. Shingo Tagi is the over open weight champion, and he's facing Tamatanga. Didn't even know Shingo was champion, but here we are. <laughs> um, Rich, what the hell's going on here? How did Shingo get the belt? <laughs> okay, so what happened was Shingo won the belt in, I want to say a couple of months ago, at Fighting Spirit Unleashed. He beat okay. Tamatanga for it. Oh, and then... Enough. Uh, he def- he beat Trent Beretta to retain it because AEW was like, here's a body catch. And after that, Shingo was like, hey, anybody who wants some can get some. And surprise, surprise, the guy he beat for the title said, let's do this at Wrestle Kingdom, which was like, okay, why didn't we just do this at Wrestle Kingdom? Well, at least that, that actually makes sense. At least that actually makes sense. Um, That's cool then. So is it as simple as, is, is there a title change here or is Shingo retaining? I'm assuming Shingo's going to retain. And, and some of that really goes into the big – actually, you know what? Let's take a step back. I think a lot of my predictions are based on the fact that Zuchiko Okada re-signs with New Japan. Okay. If enough. he does not re-sign with New Japan, 
a lot of this is probably going to change in terms of who gets positive because I would assume that Shingo may need to jump suddenly into the main event title scene. Again. Got it. Makes sense. Um, Daddy, you following suit with Shingo? Because I, I kind of agree. I don't see a title change here. I don't. I don't see a title change specifically. I don't unless a storyline changes for some reason, but I, I, I don't think so. Um, you know, you know, for a lot to hinge around Okada, uh, it's just one of those. Well, let's wait and see what happens, and hopefully, and the, keep my fingers crossed that he sticks with New Japan. If not, we'll get to more Okada a... later. We'll get to more Okada later. Trust yeah. me. Thoughts. I have thoughts and opinions, and we'll get to that later. <laughs> no, understood. Um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match. Apparently, the Bull Club War Dogs, Clark Connors, and Drill and Lordy are wait, the wait, wait, wait. We have another. We have another split faction from Bullet Club. Go fig. They're like gremlins. Just don't feed them. Man. <laughs> the War Dogs is the because I remember because I last time I watched I think it was the G One. So the War Dogs, if I'm right, is the group from Finley. Is this David Finley's group? Okay, just making sure I'm on the same page. I haven't watched the G1. Um, versus Catch Shoot 2, TJP and Ahira. Uh, when in doubt, go with the Bullet Club because they cheat everywhere. So I'm, I always go with the, go ahead and doubt, go with the Bullet Club, Rich. Mm. Yeah, so for this one, the War Dogs basically formed at the expense of Catch 2 2. And so they're looking for revenge because they lost to those guys. And now they want to kind of get their belts back when they didn't realize that Drilla Maloney, which is a name I never thought I would say in a sentence, uh, <laughs> wasn't going to be aligned with them. And so, yeah, so this is another one where back in the day when the Young Bucks or whoever, or uh, let's say it was uh, Red Dragon World Champs, I'm assuming this might open like they typically would open. Yeah, of course, with a junior, that was the yeah. Get the little dudes out of the way. And so I, I think that Catch 2 2 will when if only to uh give hope to the US side of things in terms of New Japan USA. Makes sense. Dad? You know, Bullet Club is starting to remind me of NWO all over again. NWO red and black, NWO this and that, Bullet Club this and that. I just think there's too many factions of Bullet Club and I think there there causes a conflict in fighting. So I gotta go catch two two to get the belts. They're literally Bullet Club in three different companies right now. Like, literally. <laughs> Isn't there Bullet Club in, in TNA, too? Like, <laughs> I was going to say, if you're being honest, we still got Bullet Club in uh, WWE. Oh, yeah, because I don't count yeah. them. I don't ever count them yeah, because yeah, they're, they're not, not on Bullet TV Club. a lot, but yeah. like, they're Bullet like, Club, uh, yeah. and Wait, you have you know, Impact. Finn, ba Finn Balor. Yes, yeah, so yeah, Finn Balor, eight, and then the, uh, the quadrangle of AJ Styles, uh, Mission and the 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 b b boys. Yes. Uh, you have Bullet Club Gold. I can't rotate. I guess I can. You can rotate and there you complete go. on your. Oh, own. That is one of my favorite entrances, by the way. Period. Or it is. I love that entrance so much. I completely go nuts every time I see it. <laughs> I miss it is. So much. I miss Drew Robinson because he made that entrance for me. The <laughs> beard <laughs> and the screaming. Like, yeah, it, he made it, yeah. it for me. Uh, uh, and and of course, uh, ba uh sign switch. Gotta love Sign Switch. Yes. Uh, he's like Sign yes. Guy Deadly. Uh, th then, of course, you have regular OG Bullet Club. You have uh, War Dogs. You have Bullet Hunter. Club Rogue G General through Fale, Fale Army. Yeah. It, 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 uh, yeah. Rogue Army, Bullet Club Gold, House of Torture, uh, ABC. Yep. That's the one in uh, Impact with Boston and Chris yeah, Bay. Yeah. Slash TNA, uh, what we're calling it today. <laughs> and then, oh, that's right, that's right. We don't we we. And then, of course, in new, in uh, AEW, you have not just Bullet Club Gold, but like the guys who were in Bullet Club that don't acknowledge it anymore, like the, the, yeah, Page, exactly. Adam Cole. <laughs> By the way, it, it cracked up Andy when I told her that Adam Page was in the Bullet Club. Like what? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> Really? Everybody was. I think we yeah. were in the Bullet Club for a week. I don't remember. Well, it was it was him and the, him and the Young Bucks. I remember yeah. like Cody was in the Bullet Club. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cody was in the Bullet Club, and it turned into this weird like the elite. That's when the elite uh, started. That's actually when the elite officially started, right? Like, no, I remember that. before the elite when it was the awkward Southern couple who invited you to their hotel room <laughs> when they were like trying yes. to seduce the Golden Lovers, and he's like, "I'll love you better than he will," and I'm like, "Oh, yeah. Cody, buddy." What is happening here? 
because <laughs> oh. I'm looking at Brandy. I'm looking at you. So which one of you want Kenny? Which one of you want Abushi? Which one of you want Bo? Because it got weird. <laughs> like that triple threat I'm for the sure, uh, wow. IWGP title between Kenny and uh, Cody and Abushi, where he kissed both of them. Yeah, I, I was like, all right, if you want to make out with them, make out with them, but don't make it a storyline. Don't just like <laughs> ch- 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 cheapen it. Damn, this sounds like a like a like a good script for a porno. Wow. Well, it was like a fanfic gone right or gone wrong, depending on who's reading <laughs> it. Damn. Oh man! All right, Stephen Amell. I'm sorry, that's the last one. I forgot Stephen Amell was a Amell. member of the Bullet. Oh, Stephen yes. Amell, the one. Yes, oh, he, was, he was. He was. The special, I he was the special. He was the special one that got in. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, I remember that and, too. And, and, and to this day, I still can't believe that. I've seen hey. Stephen Amell pop up in more uh, paper live events for AEW yes. than WWE. Yes. He's actually talked about it in an interview once that he's still in the book club member. He's actually talked about that one time recently. He didn't put his colors away. He, he's Even he's when gotta get the ring canceled, now. He's like, I'm still pulling the love. Well, it's he's, like, he's like, like Dennis Robin. It's like Dennis Robin is still never the NWO. Oh, uh, <laughs> same Sorry, mentality. The same there. mentality, though. That happened. Well, I forgot what interview it was recently that it popped up on the bottom of the screen, former member of the NWO. He's like, get that rid of that. They erased the former <laughs> NWO. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, let's get back to this. Oh my god. Okay. okay, let's get back to this. Where were we? All right. Um IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship and it's like um Romu Takahashi. Shocker. This is all Desperado. I feel like this I feel like I could just start with Hiromo as champion almost every year. So yeah. <laughs> versus El Desperado. Um Rich, go ahead. Yeah, it is the year three thousand. Robots ever placed this doing everything. Hiromu Takahashi is defending the IWGP junior heavyweight title against a local alien. Uh, in this case, uh, what happened was these guys mixed and matched throughout the junior tag league and throughout that time. And eventually, Hiromu does what Hiromu does and won the title. And they just called each other out. So it's a simple thing of, we have good matches, let's do this. Yeah, and for me, I think that uh, Hiromu as champion, I, again, two minds. If Tanahashi can still go, if Okada's not leaving, I think he should just retain and keep it moving. If you want to take that risk and move him into the heavyweight division like my man Shingo, he's bulky enough now you can let him sneak in. And you might want to have him drop it to Despy. By the way, so you said the year 3000. And the first thing that came to mind... One day when I came home at lunchtime, I heard a funny noise. I out into the backyard to find out if it was... Uh, so, um, the Jonas Brothers are doing the stadium series in Jersey, and I'm going to be there. So I have to, like, get my Jonas Brothers... Knowledge on him. I don't know if he's at all. But it's the first thing that came to mind just now. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be there on purpose? I'm going to the stadium series. They're, the, they're, doing, they're doing the pregame concert for the stadium series. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I really have to take it for the hockey game. Like, what the hell do you want me to do here? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The stadium series, the devil fight. Okay, okay, okay. They okay. wanted me to I, stop I thought, talking I about thought, for three months. <laughs> I, I, thought maybe, I thought maybe you were like a closet no. brother's groupie no. or something. No. Okay, I you scared like, me for I, a second. I don't like three Yoda Brothers songs, and one of them was the year 3000, which is why it popped into my brain. <laughs> you scared me for a second. I thought all of a sudden you were coming out, and now no. you're a big Jones Brothers fan no. or something. But we're from Jersey. Okay. We are from Jersey. But like... Okay, well, since we're how you feel about T Swift? I don't care. I'm gonna put up a little sign. Nope, not today. That's the bell that Blake's ringing. By the way, you know, no, seriously, we have been me and me me and Tyler have stadium tickets for three months. We've been talking about it on the show for three months, and Dad forgot we had tickets. (laughs) We've been talking about it like literally every week for three months. (laughs) The game is in two months. Like, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was at a hockey game and a concert broke out. Yeah, but I'm pumped. It's going to have to be in the freezing cold, like, MetLife Stadium. It's going to be fucking crazy that night. Um, anyway, yeah, by the way, I, mean, I found out the game's going to be on ABC. The game's going to be on ABC, not TNT that night. So it was even bigger. It got Ooh. bigger. I had it announced. Like, wow. Yeah, big time. Anyway, back to this. Um, her room versus El Desperado. Um, but did you actually say her room was retained? I forgot what you said. I'm sorry. I oh, yeah, I said. Oh, yeah, so it, it, I think he's going to retain. 
Okay, sorry. That I was thinking would a doubt say Hiromu retains. Um, that, um, um I'm gonna say El Desperado makes a good attempt, but just falls a little bit flat. So Hiromu retains. I expect a really good match though. I do expect a really good match. Uh, a friend of mine just distracted me. She just texted me. Um, her husband and her daughter are going to WrestleMania in Philadelphia, and they just got a they just got t-shirts for the event, like just now. So she's just showing me a t-shirt for WrestleMania oh. in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone's got some uh, lucrative money. Somewhere. They live in Baltimore, so they're human, and the two of them are going to the. Oh uh, well, there you go. So anyway, that just that just popped on my phone as we're talking. Okay, I swear I took my meds this morning. I swear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Japan World Television Championship. Um, Zack Saber Jr. taking on um Oshita Tanahashi. I'm not gonna lie, this this is gonna be fun. Um, I, this is one of those times where I almost lean towards. Tanahashi to win, but then, Zay, but then ZSJ, ZSJ kind of win the belt back almost like immediately. Uh, Rich, what do you think? Yeah, I'm coming and say both. And this was a storyline that much like Hiromu and Despi, Zach's been champion for a little bit. He just came out and said, you know what, Tanahashi, we got to fight. And Tanahashi was like, all right, I need to be on the show, so let's do this. And off they popped. Uh, I, I think that Tanahashi having the World Television Championship would be a fun experience and allow him to kind of slowly start his retirement tour in earnest. Well, what's good about that, especially with his age, the short matches will help. Because mm-hmm. they're not long matches. That'll help. Is it, still, is it, is it a 20-minute time limit? I forgot. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. It is 20 minutes. Cool. I'm um, dead. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I think putting the bell on Tanahashi would be a good thing. Especially if he's looking at the the home stretch for for retirement, um, I I think I if he does go that way, depending on how everything goes, I mean, I would want him number one to have minor injuries and stay relatively injury free. But with what he does, it's very difficult to do that. So. Hey, if this is the way he wants to go, let's go out with a blaze of glory and at least with a title around your waist. Hey, Rich, I'll ask you right now. Tanahashi, is he in the G1 this year? I think he is, and unfortunately, I think he gets somewhere between four and seven points. I, I, was, I, I was thinking this might be like the last, like almost the last run in the G1. Yeah. This year. That's what I, was I think he's going to get, he's gonna gonna get... Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I get you. I think he's going to get start. He's going to be put in that. Uh, Nagata role where the longer they keep him in, the less points he's going to get and the more sad it's going to be. So I hope for his sake, he decides like, Hey, this is it. He's like Suzuki last year where he decided I'm going to go on a U.S. tour instead, <laughs> which the, the, the was fantastic. I'm not going to lie. This happened. Just, you can just pop up at random places mm-hmm. last summer during the G1 was absolutely amazing. <laughs> so. But, all right. See, um, I, I see Timmy Hashi doing, doing a thing where, he picks out his favorite opponents that he wants to wrestle and he does this global tour and he comes to the States. I'm going to be so, a bad idea. I mean, if you want to do that, that'd be great. I mean, if he popped up on like a DCW show like Suzuki did, I think people would tell him like, oh, shit, Tana, I hear in DCW? What the hell? <laughs> we have to watch that. <laughs> so weird. I have to watch it. Um, you never know. He could pop up in TNA. I'm not about, you know what? Okada is going to be in TNA. Like anything's possible now. Anything's possible. <laughs> like seriously. There's, like, there's no more forbidden door. I saw that graphic and I'm like, the forbidden door is removed. Yeah, when I saw Okada in a graphic with TNA wrestling, I'm like, okay, we're done. There's nothing left. <laughs> I've seen it all. There's nothing left to do. <laughs> We've done everything. Oh, yeah. Forbidden door got removed. Don't worry about it anymore. Hey, hey. All right, uh, moving on. IWGP Tag Team Championships. All right, so, okay, I even know the story about this one because the, the, the complaining online. Um, Bushimon, uh, Rokugoto, and Yoshihashi, champions, they won the Tag League <laughs> as champions, and they got to apparently pick their opponent or something along those lines, but people were pissed because mm-hmm. why did the champions win the Tag League when it could have been anybody else? Because the Tag League were supposed to face a champion here. Um, and out came, and, and they picked um, Piccolo and El Phantasmo. I have to ask, Rich, how often does the 
the champions win the tag league because I don't recall this happening often. It's been especially with this crew with Bishamon. It's happened for two out of the last three or three out of the last four years. Okay, it's rare, More but with these guys realize. in particular, yeah. it's it's been pretty frequent. And usually, I black out during the tag league because it's been so much of a drag when. Like they've let their tag leagues die. This one is also a, uh, it's listed as the IWGP Championship, but it's also winner takes all. So Hikuleo and El Fantasmo's uh, open weight tag championships oh. are also on the line. Oh, the, so uh, winner uh, leads uh, with uh, everything. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay, 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 got it. Although this, wait, okay, that reminds me because me and Dad had this discussion off the air when it came mm-hmm. to um, New Japan Strong Titles because obviously Eddie Kingston is on the line in the um, in the in the C two. Is, are they just getting rid of the strong titles at this point? Are we just slowly dissolving the strong title because the show doesn't really exist anymore? Yes. And they're also at the same time still wanting to expand internationally. And that's why, as we talk about one of the other matches coming up, mm-hmm. we have a new title being created. So they yeah, we'll get to that. that. Yeah, we'll get to that in a couple minutes. But no, so, I was thinking, we're talking about it off the air. I mean, we haven't brought that conversation to the air okay, yet. So, so are, are, are the strong titles token titles in, in that respect? Well, not so much token, Mark. They got created during that time during the pandemic when people couldn't travel. So they mm-hmm. wanted to have stakes for the New Japan Strong Show. What they didn't realize was they were going to have such a good relationship with AEW and Impact. So now they can use those uh, North American-based promotions to highlight their folks in addition to having New Japan shows, in addition to having them pop up on indies. And so they don't necessarily need them as much as they did when they were creating those stories from 20 right. to 21, 22, say. You know, it, this kind of reminds me of how way back when where the wrestlers went to New Japan to basically hone their skills and take those skills and come back to the States and land in a major organization. Now you've got the stars from New Japan that are coming in here, getting more notoriety and basically having a whole new different type of fan base, which is great. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that to the year because we talked about it off here and didn't have a chance to talk about it here. All right, when you brought it up. Okay, well, actually, we didn't even talk about who's winning the title. We just talked about how he got here. Um, <laughs> is this simple as a retention, Rich, or do you think there'll be a title change here? The title change titles seem to change hands are them all the time. So I never know with this one. I mean, Bishamon's had it for a while. They've had great matches. They, they were the only team that I watched all of their tag matches during the league because I thought they, they did a really good job. Much as I dislike Yoshihashi, I have to admit he's a pretty good wrestler and him and Goto are a great team. Uh, I I think that retention makes the most sense to kind of give them more flowers, especially if they're not going to do anything. Because Hikuleo by himself, Phantasmo by himself, they make more sense. Putting them in a tag team and locking them in like that doesn't make sense to me personally. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I was more leaning towards retention anyway, but it's a tough one because they can do something weird and just happen. Like, what's happening with the titles for no reason whatsoever? And then, at, like New Year's Dash, Bushiman won it back. So it's like they could do that. And it wouldn't be that far fetched at all. Because I thought that Hikuleo in the singles, I thought they were giving him a push to go for a major title. And all of a sudden, now you want to throw him in the I thought he looked great in the G1. I thought he looked great in the G1. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. So, I mean, but again, it's going to be like we want to get him on the card and we have nowhere to put him. Yeah. <laughs> is, exactly. is that what it is? I just Especially with it being one night instead of two. Yeah. yeah exactly. I was just thinking, as I'm, think, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, this could be a situation where they want to take a layout on the card. They're out of single right. matches, really, and they have a tag team title match. They might as well do this. So, yeah. That's literally the only thing I can think of why we're here. Yeah. All right. Um, We talked about it. Brand new title. It is the IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship. And can I say, um, I realized I had champion down and it's no longer a champion because when I wrote this out, it was still the U.S. Championship. Um, do you, I, I loved how they got rid of the U.S. and U.K. titles by having David Finley destroy them with a mallet. It was so fucking cartoon character thing. I cracked up laughing when I for the video. I was like, this is like I had a, I had a, I had a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. Like, <laughs> who comes to a room with a mallet to destroy titles? I, 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 I think David was... David was channeling his inner Triple H. That's what I, I, I thought. Oh no! It wasn't, no, no. It was, it was like a cartoon mallet. It wasn't even like a sledgehammer. It was like a cartoon mallet. Yeah, it was just like a. It was, it was closer to the Fiend. Than it, was, it was more like to the Fiend than Triple H. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. Yeah, it was All more right. that way than you think. All right. So the match, 
for the new, now the new IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship, it is Will Ospreay, John Moxley, and David Finley. Sure, why not? <laughs> Let's do this. Um, because of the new title, and Osprey, I think Osprey is finishing his day to New Japan, and Moxley doesn't need to win a title. Is it as simple as this belt is here for Finley to win, Rich? Yeah, I think so, and I think it's going to be here for him to win, probably at the expense of Osprey. Uh, so one of those WWE three way specials where Moxley hits the Death Rider on Osprey, Finley throws Moxley out of the ring. Hops on the corpse of Osprey, bang, bang, boom. The new champ, who is their uh, Kadani, their uh, uh, um, CEO mentioned, they want the global championship to be defended outside of Japan and the IWGP World Championship to be defended in Japan, which makes zero sense to me. But I don't run the company. Um, by the way, I will say, I, I laughed when you said um, WWE finish. That remind, did, Didn't AEW literally have multiple title changes like that recently? Especially the women's, yep. the, the TBS championship, didn't that happen recently? Like, <laughs> so like, yeah, so trust me, it's, it's not just WWE. Both AEW did not work in WWE lately. So, um, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I almost think like you have the global championship at the secondary title, like you used to have the IC title. Like, I thought, I thought that that's what they were doing. You know, like, um, I didn't realize that there was going to be one of the ones where they defended everywhere else, which again makes absolutely no sense. Um, okay. Well, would, you, would you consider this kind of like a play, like with WWE and the new belt they created for Seth? And no, you get that is a world heavyweight championship for Raw. This is literally going to be a we're going on, we're you to win this title here and then you defend it everywhere else. This is completely different from that. I know what you're saying, but this is completely different from that. Okay. I all right. I, I just Yeah, it's weird, Mark. Like, like, it's like, kind of like it, when they had Moxley with the US title a couple of years ago, but they yeah. couldn't put the US title on AEW television. And so yeah. you're like, what what do well, we do? And then they could. And then he lost the title randomly to Lance Archer in that Texas death match for no reason. Like it made no sense. <laughs> So I, I'm guessing by putting a title on Finley, you're keeping Finley with New Japan for a while, so that way he doesn't, you know, kind of take his roots and go someplace else. I think since Osprey is and, not going to be with the company. And to say that you want a match against Osprey and Mox at Wrestle Kingdom to win a title is a great bragging point of the heel. Oh my you god, won, you, a great bragging point. Finally, not only can you say you won, but you survived. You survived, but you beat two literally of the best from now AEW and in the world to win a right. title at Wrestle Kingdom in the third yep. most important match on the show. Yep. Like, that's a big deal. They're very big. Big feather in your cap. All right. Speaking of third most important, let's get to the second most important match on the show. And some people is the most important match on the show. It is Kazucho Okada versus Brian Danielson. Two. If, uh, uh, I... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first one was phenomenal, but left Brian injured. The second time they had a match, it left Brian injured. <laughs> and now here we are. Um, I, 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 I've i got... I, I, I'll do first. Go. Okay, I'll just come, I'll come out and say it. Come on. Uh, my thing is for, for Brian to do this match... With the injury he has, and to go out full bore because he doesn't know how to go anywhere else, he doesn't go half speed, he goes full speed and goes nuts. I am very concerned in, on how the injury he's got is going to be re aggravated and require more surgery down the road. So that's just my main concern. I, I'm trying to figure out if he hasn't been able to fly much in the States because of this injury. The eye injury. How the fuck is he getting to Japan? Like, how? Is he doing Shipping this container. <laughs> I've been thinking he's, about that he's, for a while. He's going he's gonna to take the train. That's it. Thank you. That was great. That was fantastic, Rich. Thank you. He's going to take the A train downtown. That's it. Oh, my God. Um, uh, so, you mentioned it earlier. Rich, you mentioned it earlier. Okada. Could this possibly be the last weekend of Okada in New Japan? Is it possible? I'm leaning towards it might be possible now. Um, it it feels a lot like when AJ Styles left 
New Japan. And then he shocked everybody in the Rumble. Like, oh. That's what this feels like. It, it, it got, my gut feeling makes it feel like that to me. Because if the contract's expiring right before the Rumble, and you have Okada pop up in the Rumble in front of a crowd that knows who he is, holy fuck. And I know myself, I will completely mark the fuck out watching it if it happens. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, my, my thing, and I don't want to play spoiler for anybody, but my I'm thing spoiler, is... Spoiler, but it's good. It's hard to say. Okay, what about Okada popping up in AEW and him and Danielson continuing their feud back in AEW? Do you really want to see Danielson die? <laughs> no, but <laughs> knowing, knowing TK... I know, I'm T- just saying. I'm just saying. Do you really want to see Danielson knowing, die? Knowing, knowing <laughs> TK and how he wants to promote this and the big fanboy that he is... I can see him putting some, you know, lucrative coin to, to, to do this. I, I understand. I understand that. As a fan of both of them, I, I would like them to not fight each other for a while after this and that, just so that Brian can heal. <laughs> yeah, for, for about a year, hopefully. Yeah, you need but... a break. You need to break after all this. Between the injury at Wrestle Kingdom and, um, and Forbidden Door, and then the, the new injury, and then being in the T2, after this match, he needs a break. <laughs> he really does. Just... Let him go home, be a family man. That's yeah, all I, I would say. I was approaching retirement. He was approaching soon to be retirement and stuff like that. I mean, well, light retirement, not retirement. It's sing retirement year. It's not Brian retirement year. But, um, but yeah. so that being said, that being said, yeah. with a possibility of Okada leaving, but Brian did beat him the first time. <laughs> and I feel like the whole point of this rematch was to have Okada win. Is the symbol as Okada wins, Rich? Yeah, I think because even if he is leaving New Japan, they're not going to job out one of their top guys on the promise that he might leave. And it isn't like a top guy in the sense of an AJ Styles or an Omega. No, this is, the this top is their top homegrown, like not native wrestler. So I think Okada is going to win. He's probably going to rain make Danielson into Poughkeepsie. And then we'll have to put them back together, spackle them into a ship, and bring them on back to AEW. I love how you went to Poughkeepsie when they're in Japan. That's hysterical to me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I and I have to I have to agree with Rich. I, you know, you don't want when your top stars to kind of go out on a on a losing end. You want them to go on a winning end. And you know, he well, kind of can can have brain rates on this and. No matter where he pops up, if he wants to say have a match, say when Brian decides to hang it up, I would say this would be the nice farewell retirement match they have would be Brian and Okada. I'm gonna throw out a theory because I mentioned Okada in the Rumble. Um, because my well, because I you can ask Dad. I told the story on the air a couple of times, but I'll tell I'll tell him the story. Because Christian is amused by this every single time I tell the story. When we were at the Forbidden Door Go Home Show, the first Forbidden Door. And we were at the go-home show here in Milwaukee. It was here. And Okada came out, and we didn't know he was going to be there. And that music, in that in the coin flip hit, I lost my fucking mind. I, I, oh, I was God. sitting right by the entrance ramp. And I lost my mind. Like, I lost my voice. Yeah. Like, I completely lost my voice during that entrance because I did not expect to hear that music in that environment. And, and Christian looked at me like, holy shit, I've never seen you like that before. Like, ever. I've never seen you. I, I'm, I'm, te- I, I'm telling you, when that happened, that was like the best kept secret in the AEW because that night, that night, I that didn't night. hear any, I didn't hear any leaks, nothing. Yeah, and it, it, that was a great. But if he showed up in the fucking rumble, if he showed up in the rumble, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do because it's gonna be unbelievable. But I'm gonna throw out there my my, my prediction now that it's here. If they really want to do this right, and you really want to have people go absolutely fucking crazy, you do it near the beginning of the rumble and make sure Nakamura is in that ring. If Okada's gonna be the oh, Nakamura in that ring, because that would be oh, fucking my insane. <laughs> my lord. Yeah. So I just ran it out there. Oh, a, a, fan, a fan fan theory. There you go. Wow. Oh. <laughs> to have them both in the ring. No, oh. how close they are too. Knowing you're like best friends makes it even better. Mm-hmm. Like. <laughs> so. All right. And Shinsuke's been good spreading magic rumors. That way. Well, not spreading rumors. Shinsuke's been dropping hits like, I will spread chaos in the WWE. And that would be to have chaos members, Shinsuke Nakamura and <laughs> and AJ Styles would just be like, I'm, he's he's here. 
he's here and he's wonderful. Yeah, it, 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 trust me, if they do this moment right, that building will be so fucking hot, it'd be amazing. Ooh. Especially if you decide to just randomly do Okada Tanahashi at WrestleMania in Philly. Because, oh. <laughs> because you can do that. Because you can totally do that. <laughs> so... Oh man, that it's a story just, out just in my brain. As I'm talking this out, it's that's popping in my brain as an idea. <laughs> wow. The possibilities are just endless. All right, let's get to the main event. Um, the match that's been set since the G1, the most anticlimactic ending to a G1 ever. IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. It is Tanana taking on Tensei Naito. You can feel my excitement in my voice when I say that match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. How much excitement just, I have with talking about Okada Brian, you, and here we are you're, with Nitro Sonata. <laughs> you're, you're you're so excited. I gotta tell you to calm down, okay? I know. Um, I I I vented about this after the G1 on the air. That was the most anticlimactic ending to a G1 ever. <laughs> it was so anticlimactic. So here we are. It's Sonata Nitro. Rich, what the hell is going on here? What is happening? Is Sonata losing the title? Yes. And looking at what, what, what your second question, what's happened is this is a year too late. Last year was the year that Naito said specifically, I need to win it this year. I want to wrestle. I want to give this opportunity. Even if I don't win the title, I want to be able to prove I can do this. They don't do it. Now he is in the final. He wins it. He's wrestling Sonata. He just had the surgery. He's another one. We got back-to-back -back matches where someone's going in with a bad eye where a doctor has said, maybe you shouldn't do this. And the doctor told him, you get three surgeries. This is the third. After this, if your eye starts to de degenerate again, it's over. I can't fix it. And he was originally going to get that third surgery when he retired. Instead, he didn't wait. I hope after this win... He has maybe a couple of more matches this year and he retires because Naito needs, he deserves it after his illustrious career. Sonata, one of my dear sons, I have been supportive, maybe to a fault, like all parents are, as people have poo pooed his uh, IWGP title run, but it has been underwhelming. They tried it, it didn't work. I know Brian Alvarez compared it to Jinder Mahal. I will not. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. I would never no. compare. I, I, as much as it's been underwhelming, I would never compare. No way. That is that is a terrible comparison. That's an awful comparison. Yeah, it's terrible. You know, my, my thing is, I think with Sonata, with uh, Okada leaving, I think they want to fill that void. If he leaves. And, if he leaves. Let's throw that out there. Continue. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. I think they want to fill that void, but I don't think Sonata is the guy that can actually do it. I... You know, I'm I'm torn with Sonata because seeing him from where he's he's started to where he's at now, yeah, he's made a vast improvement, but he's not generating the fan base that they would hope to have, and I think that's just it. Um, I don't know what to do to make him more popular or exciting or anything like that. I mean, if he changes storyline, if he changed the character. If if this is just four know, or five guys, depending on the month. You know, <laughs> I yeah, I, I see Sonata, you know, hanging on to the belt and hoping that they do good things with it, but I don't think he's gonna be hanging on to that belt for a long time. Uh I'll go with what Rich said. And Titan Angel wins the title here. He gets his big because he never really got that big celebration. I was like, the last time he won it, he got it got crushed oh. by Kenta. So we never got his yeah. big celebration. Um, so this is how you do it. You redo it, you have him win, everyone goes nuts, and then using Rich's logic, if all is failed, you have him drop it by Dominion. And then you figure you put get somebody pushed by Dominion, somebody big to bring the belt from him, then. Or one of the youngins. You have several of the youngins that have been cooking and they're ready to kind of percolate. Exactly. Somebody like that, you do something like that for Dominion. And we'll all circle back oh, to Dominion and figure out if they okay. do that. <laughs> okay, I'll, 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 throw, I'll throw a name in right now. Hikaleo. Yeah. There's also like I think you got Hikaleo, you got Shota Umino. Umino, yes. Got, um, mm -hmm. Wait, Umino uh, the uh, all, all the youngins that were in the D1. 
that whole like the the whole steep yeah. height. <laughs> right. Right. So all right, well I mean yeah. That's that's all that's all that can be done. Well that is Wrestle Kingdom 18, and that is the way we end our year again, talking about Wrestle Kingdom. Um by the way, it was funny. I like I said earlier, I was doing some stuff to, behind the scenes, and literally two years ago, we you Rich was on the show on the last show of the year talking about something, and here we are again doing it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, before I hit the music to close out, since Sal is not here, my my thing is, and, uh, and this is you know, I think New Japan has now gotten a broader fan base in the states as the stars have made appearance, and with the New Japan World app and everything else. I think you're going to see more people have more interest in New Japan Hopefully. and get more popular than what it is. Well, on that positive note, let's hit this because Sally is not here. For more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube, go to the show.com. Don't forget to comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. We're going to close out with a song that's out of a special song. It's actually, um, Nai Rivera, there's a name I haven't said in a very long time, in the, in the re- reuniting cast of Glee. They did a, they actually brought back an old song that Nai Rivera recorded that was never released called Prayer for the Broken. And they released it, they re released it for charity. Um, and now a, a bunch of the cast from Glee did, a, did background vocals for it. It's an absolutely gorgeous song. So I'm going to play it. And it's kind of the stream that goes to charity. I do suggest you go find it and stream it. It's a really, really good song, especially if you were a big fan of Glee back in the day. Huh. That being said, that's your thing. Hey, it's always been your pleasure. And if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at, please patronize these people. These are the young men and women coming up in the sport of pro wrestling, sports entertainment. They want to show you what they can do. They want to show you the character that they, they are having. They want to show you how good they are with their wrestling skills and their promo skills. They want the whole package. And they want to do this by entertaining you as best they can so they can get to that next echelon, the brass ring in a major company so they can be superstars. And they can only do that by you patronizing them and do it responsibly and act like adults to act like assholes, please. You've got, you've just got more blood with that now. <laughs> That's okay. Oh man. Um, Rich, plug away. I'm thick skinned. Well, thank you as always. Uh, if you if you like what you heard from me chatting with Mark and Blake, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Rich underscore Fan. Uh, I don't know how long I'll be there, but I'm here. Uh, on uh, the podcasting side of things, Pro Wrestling Torch is where I hang my hat. I do columns once a month, as well as podcasts every week with Wade Keller, our editor publisher. Everything with Rich and Wade, as well as the Everything Mailbag with my buddy Josh Mustachio. Uh, East Coast Cast, which is where I think Blake and Sal kind of first found me through Travis yep. uh, and Cam and all those fun yep. dudes. Uh, you can also listen to me there. And then uh, as well as with Will Cooling on the deep dive with Rich Van Will Cooling. Last but certainly not least, uh, last few years I've been having a pretty cool relationship. And now I'm on board over at Post Wrestling as well, where I do MCU later with myself and my co-host WH Park review anything through the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nice. Cool. Very exciting. That's very exciting. Um, by the way, Rich, it's funny. We that three people we found on the show regular all came from the East Coast Cast. It was you, Trav, and Kurt Hoffman. All from crazy. that world. So <laughs> so all right. Um next week I'm Sally back and we will be doing our traditional year end show. Um looking back at twenty twenty three, looking ahead to twenty twenty four and seeing how bad we did in our wrestling predictions. So go back and go, go <laughs> join us next week for that. Um that being said, thank you all for joining us. In the end of 2023, thank you, Rich, as always, for coming on. We'll have to get you on more than one next year. <laughs> and um, thank you all for listening. I'm Blake. I'm Mark. And you've been listening to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, we love you guys. And remember, the veto ties. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
This is a classic of this way. So strange and so temporary, so temporary, but so hope we like you never let me go. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. And good night. Bye-bye, bitch. <laughs>